All right. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and we will um, spend a few minutes in the Word this morning. Lord, thank you that we can open your Word and that we can uh, see what it says about these character traits that the world around us recognizes as good and that your Word recognizes as godly. Lord, help us as your disciples, as your followers, to live these out as disciplines, as fruit of a heart that is turned to you, as fruit of the Holy Spirit living and working in us and through us. Help us today as we talk about our attitude, especially as it uh, relates to the virtues of humility and gratitude. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, like I said, the, um, the Scripture, I think, is pretty clear that um, gratitude is something that we ought to pursue, that we ought to live out. Um, Paul, and we're going to read from one of Paul's letters in a few minutes, but Paul especially talks again and again and again about giving thanks. The Psalms talk about giving thanks. It's demonstrated throughout the Old Testament for God's followers, and it's demonstrated and instructed through the New Testament. But it's not just uh, a church thing. So if you, in, in the corporate world, in the business world, in your neighborhood, in your community, in schools and colleges, like it is recognized, it is generally accepted that being a person of gratitude and having an attitude of gratitude is a good thing. That, that's a, that it's healthier for you. It's healthier for your environment. It's a good thing overall. Um, I think experts from uh, all kinds of fields have recognized this, and some have even famously commented on it. There's a corporate advisor, her name is Carolyn Warner, who put it like this, I'm convinced that attitude is the key to success or failure in almost any of life's endeavors. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. A, a, a business writer named Carl Mueller said it this way, he said, your attitude in the workplace can be one of the most, if not the most, telling aspect of how others in the company look at you and feel about you as a coworker. Now you can replace company and coworker with family, an extended family and, and relatives or community, neighborhood or students alongside you or, or uh, any kind of social relationship. And I think your attitude is what people are going to really recognize and comment on. Like that's just, uh, you know, such and such, they're always so negative. Or, Man, that person. There's an individual that I've worked with that is hands down the most positive individual. It's almost frightening how positive. Now, when you hear this person's story, and I won't get into that, but when you hear this person's story and where they were and where they are, you think, okay, I get it. Like, I see why this person is so positive, even though on the surface it's almost creepy. But it's not just the business world. Charles Swindoll, the, the well-known pastor and writer, had this to say, attitude is more important than the, the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than what people do or say. It's more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. Because your attitude, which is largely driven by humility and gratitude, your attitude will be what helps you connect with people or repels people. And I know repels is a strong word, but it's accurate, I think. And of course, the, the uh, football coach from many years ago who always had some incredibly wise things to say, Vince Lombardi, he said this, he said, if you aren't fired with enthusiasm, you will be fired with enthusiasm. And so the, the importance of attitude, if you are somebody who is natu more naturally wired 
to be positive or more naturally wired to be more upbeat or more optimistic like this is all great news for you because this is right in your wheelhouse but if you but if you don't have a positive attitude maybe more naturally or or if you're in a place in life where you've gotten kicked around a little bit if you're in a place in life a situation where you're, you're distressing if things around you tend to be negative how can you be expected to have the right attitude a positive attitude an attitude of gratitude and humility and what does this have to do with the Christian faith anyway attitude like these were business writers and some others right how can how, how, how does this idea of attitude and the Christian life where's the, where does this come together what what do they have to do with each other well I'll start with attitude attitude is just uh, it's sort of your your mental and emotional position regarding the situation you're in that's your attitude so it's a feeling it's an emotion attitude has to do with how we respond to challenges how we respond to opportunities how we respond to frustrations and people with a positive attitude tend to think feel act in more encouraging and hopeful and helpful ways and it's true whether those whether those situations those circumstances are inherently positive or inherently negative our attitude is how we respond to those things and there's two character traits and I've mentioned them already that work hand in hand in shaping our overall attitude and I think when you think through this it makes sense they are gratitude and humility and by the way I don't think you can consistently live out one of those without the other being true <clears throat> think about think about that people you know who tend to be just grateful people they they, they understand the, the gifts they've been given and the situation that they're in and they are grateful that just seems to be who they are they also probably tend to have a proper view of their place in this like they're not they're not too haughty and they're also not um, to uh, self-debasing so um, humility by the way beating yourself up is not the same as humility in fact I think it's just another form of pride pride is bringing attention and focus and glory to yourself whether it's praising yourself or completely bringing yourself down in public either one of them is meant to draw attention to yourself and so while we see somebody who is constantly talking negative about themselves and we think well they're not proud that's for sure well no in a sense they are that's still pride that is still drawing attention to yourself and it's still an inaccurate view of one's self and I also think that um, gratitude and humility while they work hand in hand kind of like two sides of the same coin I, I think if you get those out of whack if those are not right in your life then your general attitude is going to turn sour as well I, I just think that plays out that way time and time and again and so every November in Bryan Independent School District they um, put a focus on uh, an emphasis on the teaching of the character trait of gratitude they focus on the character trait every month November is gratitude obviously November makes uh, perfect sense for that focus because of Thanksgiving Brian ISD describes gratitude as being thankful and appreciative I love that that's just such a simple description very straightforward and incredibly accurate gratitude is being thankful and appreciative and I think for us as followers of Jesus 
Gratitude is about being thankful and appreciative to God for who He is and the things He's done and given us, but not to over-spiritualize it so that everything, so that, so that we're only grateful, we're only thankful for what God has done for us. Because God works in our lives so that people are encouraging and do things. So, so a person who, who is a person of gratitude is, 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 makes a habit, a lifestyle of expressing thankfulness and appreciativeness, not just to God for the things He's done, but to each other for the good things that you've done. I consider myself to be incredibly fortunate to be part of this church because uh, you guys have generally been very encouraging and supportive of, of me and of our family and of the work that we are trying to do here. And so that's encouraging to me. And so I want to express gratitude to God for calling us here, but also to you. And I think if we just spiritualize it so that we're only thankful to God, then we miss out on a huge blessing uh, of the lifestyle of gratitude. And that's of being thankful to one another. It's impossible to be truly grateful to God and truly grateful to each other without a proper view of one's self. And that's where humility comes in. Bryan Collegiate High School has their list of core virtues that they want to instill in students. And one of those that correlates with gratitude is humility. And they describe humility as a modest viewpoint of one's own importance and willingness to admit one's intellectual limitations and mistakes. Now, they stress the intellectual side because it's a school. But this is, a, this is about having a proper self-view. Not to think too much of oneself, but to, to have an accurate assessment. Look, if you're good at math, be good at math, own it. But just because you're good at math doesn't make you the best at math, right? Like, like there's, that's the difference between being prideful and being humble. So if to, to sort of condense that, gratitude is being thankful and appreciative, and humility is having the right view of one's self. Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul, I think, offers um, a great demonstration of these traits. Uh, he does this in several places, but I want us to go to his letter to the church at Philippi. And so that's the book of Philippians in the New Testament. And we're going to read a few short verses in the first chapter, early in the book, and then a few verses in the last chapter, uh, toward the end of the book in chapter 4. And so here's what he says in Philippians 1, beginning verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel uh, from the first day until now being confident of this that he who began a good work in you will, con will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus I'm hearing Paul expressing the, the gratitude that he has to God for the people in his life and he's sharing that with those people. So he's expressing gratitude spiritually, but also communally. And then as we turn to the end of the book in Philippians 4, beginning of verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is Paul demonstrating the comprehensiveness of a heart of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, and, and his own humility. This is God that has done these work in people, and not him. He, he was there. He was grateful to be part of it. But he knew that God was the source of that, and that God is going to bring this work to completion. Paul, uh, Paul demonstrates uh, gratitude, and we, we should um, seek to emulate that. We should seek to, 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 to replicate that. Um, when, when he wrote his letter to the Philippians, here's, this is important to know for context, he wrote this about thankfulness and joy 
and rejoicing. By the way, he uses, um, even though it's one of his shorter letters, just four chapters, he uses um, the word for joy or rejoice, related words there. He uses those at least 16 times in this short book. So he's talking about thankfulness and joy and gratitude and expressing a heart of humility. And he's doing all of this from inside a Roman prison. He's not doing this from his office or his study at the first whatever church of wherever, right? He's, he's in a prison cell with an attitude of gratefulness, humility, and thanksgiving with joy in his heart. I know that sometimes, and I know this because it's not me saying I see this in you. This is me saying I've experienced this on a pretty regular basis. I know that sometimes when we go through something difficult or painful or complicated or Hard. when we go through something we it's, it's like we feel entitled to our bad attitude of course I deserve to be angry this thing has happened to me oh, excuse me for having a bad mood because of this situation I'm in if we feel like it's our right to have a bad attitude it's our right to be selfish or prideful because of our situation but Paul shows us that regardless of the situation we're in, I look, I've had it pretty bad at times. And, and even right now, I don't feel great, I'll be honest. Like I can't see out of my left eye hardly. My right shoulder is hurting because I can't see out of my left eye. My depth perception is a little wonky. And like, I, like it's not having a great week. My computer is not working right. It's got to be having to do some work done on it. The, setting up the video camera this morning there turns out there's a short in the power cable that we've kind of got this thing rigged for today we've got to get that like it's been it's tough right it's i live a tough life can't you tell it's a tough life i live i, I don't remember the last time i had to spend time in a roman prison though like i tough as I think my life is, is really pretty solid. And I know yours is too. Tough as it feels in the moment. I, we've got this span of openness on the face of our building and I have gone round and round and round and I, I don't the folks who are in charge of doing something with this. I don't accuse them of being malicious or like, intentionally delaying things. I, I think that part of the delay is they're not in the building all the time, so, so they're not thinking about it, right? So I'm in the building, so I'm thinking about it. Well, I'm in my life. I'm seeing all the pain and heartache and the difficulty and the inconvenience and the whatever else. But when I step back from that for just a moment, I, I could probably have a little better attitude. I could probably be more grateful. What was it that allowed Paul to have such a positive attitude, to have joy, to have gratitude and humility while he was in this Situation, this prison. Wow. Paul, Paul remained positive in this situation. And, and I think he did it by keeping his eyes on Jesus. Because Paul had an understanding that even though he was in prison, nobody has crucified him. Right? He hadn't been betrayed by one of his immediate followers. And in the midst of all of that, in, in his life of not following Jesus, of persecuting followers of Jesus, Jesus had reached down 
directly to Paul and had pulled him out of that and set him on a different path. So even in prison, Paul had an awareness of who he had been, who he could be, and who he is in Christ Jesus. So gratitude helped Paul to stay positive. So I want to read this again. This is how he expressed it. I thank my God every time I remember you. I spent time with you. My brothers and sisters in Philippi, I spent time with you. And every time I think of you, every time I think of you, it, I thank God for you. In my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from, this, from the first day until now being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. See, Paul was grateful for the past, the present, and the future. Like he, had a, he could see the big picture. He focused on the bigger issue. Paul remembers how the Philippians received God's grace, how they became his partners. And how they continue to share in the work. He says, until now. And Paul's grateful for that. He rejoices. But not just the past, not just the present. He's thinking about the future. Now, a lot of English translations, the, the NIV from which I read doesn't do this, but a lot of English translations separate verses 3, 4, and 5 from verse 6. Like it's a separate thought. When really they are connected. Let me look at that again here. At first force is in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Verse 6, so continue from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion to the day of Christ Jesus. In other words, that's, it's a continuous process. It is, it is ongoing. It is not a separate process. It is not a separate thought. It's not a separate thing God's continuing. It is, it's part of this ongoing process of the Holy Spirit living in us, working in us, through us, growing us, maturing us, helping to be grateful for the things in the past, looking forward to the day of Christ Jesus. Paul thanks God not only for what has already happened, but also for what God is going to do. He talks about the day of Christ Jesus when, when Jesus returns, when the kingdom is fully established. And, you know, we talk about the kingdom of God. And Jesus said the kingdom is here. And we, when we talk about the kingdom, like some people will talk about it as if it's all in the here and now. And then there are others who talk about the kingdom is all in the future when Jesus returns returns whatever the end of time looks like in your particular view of that and understanding of scripture but but the reality is is that when we talk about the kingdom it's it's more appropriate I think to talk about it in both of those ways the kingdom is already and not yet like if you are a follower of Jesus you are part of the kingdom it is in you and you are in it but at the same time the kingdom is not yet it is to come in all of its fullness when Jesus returns. And that's what Paul says. As, as, as grateful as I am, and as much joy as I have, when Jesus comes and wraps all of this up, my joy will be full. God will have completed the good work He began. And Paul's labor would not have been in vain. But not just do we demonstrate gratitude in our lives in terms of looking at the past, present, and future? Paul is in, a, is in a situation that is hard and difficult, and he demonstrates for us how we can demonstrate gratitude even when it's hard. Those verses I read in, in chapter 4, encourages us he encourages us to follow his lead to do what he's doing he says rejoice in the lord always i'll say it again rejoice let your and remember he's in prison let your gentleness be evident to all the lord is near i i worked for several years for the department of criminal justice here in texas I, i've been inside 
modern day prisons at significant periods of time. I didn't hear a lot of this kind of talk from anybody. Even the chaplain, right? I mean, nobody. This is not the attitude of a prisoner. Except for a prisoner of Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Listen, life is filled with so many reasons to worry, to be distressed. I don't want to minimize that. Like we're commanded, we're instructed to not be anxious, to not have that kind of worry and anxiety. Cast your cares, right? I mean, this is over and over and over in Scripture. We're told to have peace and not worry, and not anxiety. But I, I am as sympathetic toward your reasons to worry as anybody I know because I worry too. I, I worry, you know, I worry about my kids, right? They, they've all left the home for the most part. I mean, they come back to visit. And, to be, I like I, but I worry about them. Not in, a, not in a bad way. I'm not anxious that something horrible is going on. But I, look, I'm a father. I'm a parent. I worry. I worry about my own health. I worry about our church. I worry about money. And I worry about... Like, I worry. I suspect some of those worries you can relate to. I suspect some of you are worried about your own families, your kids and grandkids. Some of your worries are about probably about their spiritual condition or maybe some choices they're making or maybe financial situation they find themselves in or health situation they're facing. Like, I, I get it. And you're, you're engaged here at New Beginnings. I, I think you're probably worried like I am about some of the situations we face at church. Some of you are having your own health issues, right? I'm, I'm sure you're worried about some of those things. I... Our lives are filled with reasons to worry. I think it's no less true for Paul as he's sitting in prison saying, don't be anxious about anything. God offers this peace to us. That if we pray with thanksgiving, with gratitude and with humility, if we will give that to Him, He offers us this peace, this peace of God which transcends all understanding. And I think gratitude is what makes it possible for us to do this, for us to ask with confidence, for us to experience God's peace in the midst of the things of life that worry us. Gratitude and, and, and really an attitude of not worrying does not mean we deny the difficulties of life. Like we're honest. It's not pretending that everything is wonderful. This morning, Denise came in and said, how are you doing? And, and I don't think for a moment this was the casual, how you doing, fine, you, fine. You know what I mean? I, I think she meant it, right? Denise is my friend and said, John, how are you doing? And I said, I'm okay. And she said, well, I know what that means. She's right, by the way. No, I said, no, I think it's a pretty accurate assessment today. I'm okay. Not great. Okay. And I'm okay. Okay. Just okay. 
just all right. Having an attitude of, of gratitude and humility doesn't mean we don't pretend. That doesn't mean we pretend that there aren't problems and that it's you know sunny all the time. But it but it does mean that we focus on and we highlight the good things that God has done and given us in the midst of that. Gratitude, having this attitude, having this shift in the way we think, in the way we uh, act, in the way we interact with people, it has, a, it has an impact on those around us whether at work or at home or school or wherever. It, our attitude, our attitude, good or bad, will have an impact on those around us. And so when we adopt and begin to live out an attitude of gratefulness, that has a positive impact on those around us. When we make a lifestyle out of gratitude, it, it helps us to remember the things God has done for us. It, it helps us remember that God is ultimately in control and He has not abandoned us even when we feel like it sometimes. It protects us from bitterness. It protects us from, from, from self-pity. And it opens our hearts to the peace of God. Paul's gratitude helped him rejoice even in the midst of his Imprisonment. It helped him see how his imprisonment helped spread the gospel. And that, we won't read this, but there's some verses in Philippians 1 toward the end of the chapter that demonstrate this. Paul, Paul, uh, 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 the things he wrote, his his life, his attitude um, is a is a confirmation. How much later the motivational speaker that was so popular, Zig Ziglar, said of all the attitudes we can acquire, surely the attitude of gratitude is the most important and life-changing. And that seemed to be the case in Paul's life. I will be honest with you. This is a struggle for me, especially of late. Um, Kathy will probably do me the honor of not publicly bearing witness that um, but, but I will own it it's I have not been grateful I have not expressed gratitude uh, it, I have been wrapped up in my own whatever's going on in my own life, my own struggles and my own whatever. And I realized, listen, this and this this week, I shared with Kathy last night, I said that, or this morning, I said that, I said, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize to everybody, right? I said, I said I'm not gonna say this to everyone. I said, but I'm gonna go ahead and apologize to you. I think this is gonna be a kind of a rough message, not because not because I've not spent time, not because I've not, but because it's been very convicting to think through these things. So my early struggle, my early struggle with this preparing for today was that last week talking about tolerance and acceptance, like these, those are hot button issues for the church. Those are culturally like the third rail, right? Like they will touch it and die, right? Like those are the those are tough. And, and, and on top of that, we had visitors from the school district represented, right? And so I was not worried in terms of the, what I had to say and the rightness or the, the biblical truth, but I was concerned. I don't want to offend. I mean, it, it, offense needs to come from the Word, not from the things that we say and do. And so I but then get ready, started getting ready to think about this with gratitude. That's like... Boring. Humility. Right? These are subjects that are all over Scripture. What do I do with this? Well, I found out what I do is I get personally convicted. And, and she
share that with you. And so maybe this message is helpful to you. Maybe it's not. Maybe it was 100% for me. And so what do I do? What do we do? How do we become more grateful? Well, I think one of the keys is to focus less on ourselves. When I focus on me, I either recognize the greatness that is me and become proud or focus on all the problems that I have and move away from gratitude. Right? This is this is sort of the natural, this is what we do. When you focus on you, you're not focused on others. And you're not focused on the things God is doing in your life. You're focused on you and what you are capable of and what you are accomplishing or not accomplishing. And so getting away, spending some time in the Word and in prayer, help me see that I have all of these things in my life for which I can be grateful. And I can be grateful, should be grateful, must be grateful. And so I, I want to try to follow Paul's advice and continue to pray, but do that with thanksgiving, he says. And at the end of of this, even though my situation doesn't change, my attitude does. I, I want to close with this thought. Having a good attitude is not something you have naturally. For the most part, right? You either have a good attitude or you don't. Right? This is not this is not one of those things. It also doesn't it's not based on wishful thinking. It's not mind over matter. It's not fake it till you make it. It's not self help and self talk. And it's not based in some kind of empty uh, naive optimism that doesn't acknowledge the real life that you have. Getting your attitude right starts with being a grateful person. As we remember God's good gifts to us, what He's doing for us now, what He has promised to do in the future. Becoming a person of gratitude will change. It will change the way you feel. It will change the way you interact with others. It will give you fresh vision. It will give you hopefulness. And here's what it ultimately will give you, I think. Paul said this in that fourth chapter of Philippians. He said, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. So whatever your situation is, whatever your difficulty or your circumstance or, or, or whatever the stress is, if you pray with thanksgiving and live a life of gratitude, Paul says that you can still rejoice. Because you're not rejoicing in those things in your circumstances. You're rejoicing in the Lord, in who He is, what He has done and what He will do. Will you bow your heads for prayer with me? Lord, thank You for who You are, for the things that You've done and the way that You work. And God, I pray that you would help me to be more grateful. That you would help me to focus less on me. 
more on you and on those around. I pray that for all of us, that we would focus less on ourselves and more on you and those around us. That we would be anxious for nothing, that we would bring everything to you in prayer with thanksgiving. Knowing that everything we have is a gift from you. Your word says that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Your word also says that you work everything to the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And so we know that even when we're in times of difficulty, and things don't seem good, that you can bring a good and perfect gift out of that. That you can work that out in our lives. And I pray that you would do that. Help us to rely on you and to show gratitude towards you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.